with six World Rally Championships under its belt, the Lancia Delta is definitely the greatest rally car of all time. Built after the Group B car ban, the Delta would dominate the rally scene from 1987 until 1992, when Lancia decided to retire from the rally scene, setting this way a record which probably will never be broken. So hello guys and welcome back to another video. And here is the story of Lancia Delta. In order to understand the rally part of the story, first we have to talk about the story of Delta. If you want to know more about the story of Lancia, you can check my 037 video when I talk about the story of the company and about the rally cars. We can say that the story of Delta begins in 1974, when Volkswagen presented the Mark I Golf. The first gen Golf was a complete game changer. Now there had been many cars which had had a similar style with the Golf, but Volkswagen was the first to do it right. The Golf wasn't just a popular car, but a car that saved a dying Volkswagen, which had relied for too long on the aging Beetle. Soon after the Golf was introduced, all the manufacturers started working on the Golf, and Fiat Elantra was no exception from this. Lancia wasn't just looking to build another small car, but a car that would bring back the great Lancia name. The idea was to build a small two-box four-door car. The Delta was going to share part of its platform with a Ritmo, which Fiat was developing at the time. For the design of Delta, Lancia hired Giorgetto Giugiaro. Giugiaro was the right guy for this job, since in the end he was the designer of the Golf. Differently from most of the other designers, Giorgetto was more focused on the everyday cars rather than the sport cars. Giugiaro changed some things from the original Lancia's proposal. Even though the Golf was a great car, Giugiaro was a bit disappointed the way that the car turned out, so he wanted to be more careful this time and insisted in his demands. He and Lancia had lots of debates with each other from the bagage area, for the length of the car, for the height of the car and the height of the roof, and many other things. Some went in Lancia's way and some in Giugiaro's way but uh, Giorgetto had to redesign some parts for the changes. After 4 years of development, Delta finally made its debut at the 1979 Frankfurt Motor Show. The car was well received by the press and the public, and actually, Delta won the 1980 European Car Award. But the development of Delta didn't stop here, because right after the Delta entered production, Lancia started working on a 4x4 version. This system was developed by Fiat in conjunction with Ital Design, which at the time were working on the Fiat Panda. Panda made its debut in 1980. A similar system used on Pandas was used on the Delta Turbo 4x4 prototype, which made its debut at 1982 Torino Motor Show. The car was powered by the same 1.6 liter engine that the Monte Carlo used. The turbocharged engine was mounted transversely and was connected to a 5-speed gearbox. Also alongside Delta, Lancia presented the Orca prototype. The car underneath was basically the same as the Delta 4x4, just the chassis was 20 cm longer. Like most of the Giugiaro concepts of the time, Orca was packed with all sorts of crazy features. Also in 1982 came the GT 1600. This was the first hot Delta. Until then, Delta came only with two engines, 1.3 and 1.5 liters. This was the same engine as used on the 4x4 Turbo, just naturally aspirated. So instead of 130, the engine produced 100 horsepower, which all went to the front wheels. But this not for a long time, since one year later Lancia presented the Delta HF. The car was basically a GT1600 with a turbo, since this was the exact power plant as the one found on the 4x4 turbo, 
Her power output was at 130 horsepower at 5600 rpm and 140 pound foot of torque at 3700 rpm, which is more than enough for a car that weighed only 1000 kilos. The top speed was at 190 km per hour, while the acceleration time at 8 seconds. Meanwhile, Lancia's racing division was developing the successor of the O37. A downfall had started for the little mid-engine car after the 1983 season, so Lancia needed the next champion. The next car among others had to have two main features. First the name, which would be related to their production lineup. This was only done for commercial reasons so the people could relate to the car. Second, the car had to be a four-wheel drive, fixing this way the main problem of the O37. Enter the Delta S4, which made its debut at the 1985 RIC rally. The Delta S4 was the group B car. Lancia had used every loophole on their rulebook on their advantage, in order to create the best car possible. With a four-wheel drive system and with a twin-charged engine, which could produce up to 1000 horsepower, the S4 was the car that Lancia needed, but also the car that would change railing forever. On the other side, Lancia presented the second facelift at Delta in 1986. Besides the usual facelift stuff like lights, bumpers, etc., Lancia also presented the Delta HF four-wheel drive. Differently from the prototype, the new Delta was four-wheel drive and not 4x4, continuing this way with a Delta S4 theme. The engine was a 2-liter Lampredi turbocharged engine. This was the same engine that the Tema Turbo IE used. The power was at 165 horsepower, while the torque at 188 pound-foot. The four-wheel drive system was set at a 56 to the front and 44 to the rear, creating this way a very balanced little car. The top speed was at something more than 200 km per hour, while the acceleration time at 7 seconds. The HF four-wheel drive came with four round headlights instead of the square ones that a regular car had, with different bumpers and wheels, Recaro seats and with some colors that weren't available with a normal Delta. The new hot hatch was extremely well received by both the press and the public alike. Meanwhile, FISA had decided to ban the Group B cars from railing in the World Championship. This was done after a number of accidents, which striked one after another. These accidents started with a Portugal crash, when Michel Wider, the co-driver of Mark Surer died and a number of spectators were seriously injured, and culminated with the tragic death of Henry Toivonen and his co-driver Sergio Cresto at the 1986 Tour de Corse rally. Originally, FISA had planned to create a new group, which would be called the Group S. This new category was going to be similar with Group B, but with some rules which restricted the power and the aerodynamics of the car, but this never took off. The group th that was going to replace the B was Group A. The main rule of Group A was that prototype cars weren't allowed anymore, so manufacturers had to base their rally cars on showroom cars. This was a big change, which caught everyone off guard. Out of the four main teams, only Lancia was happy with this change since Audi, Ford and Peugeot all weren't ready.